All right, so this is our first outcome in graphs and tables. Uh, our goal here is to represent and describe patterns and relationships using graphs and tables. Uh, so you're going to need either a notepad or a blank notebook and a pencil and a ruler. And then you might want to have a deck of cards, uh, pattern blocks, graph or grid paper, and a highlighter. So go ahead and get those things now. Okay, good. This is what the notepad looks like. Or you could just use a blank notebook. I got my pencil. Got my ruler. Got my deck of cards. Got some pattern blocks. And I don't have graph paper. So there you go. Make sure you got those things. Okay, so our first task, as always, is to make connections to what we already know. This time we're talking about graphs and tables. So you're writing down words that you connect to graphs and tables, uh, pictures that connect to graph and tables, things you've learned in math class before, things you've just seen in class. Uh, go ahead and pause and give yourself at least five minutes to do that. So here's maybe what yours might look like. So you can see I've connected, uh, there's line and bar graphs, there's an example of a table, they can be horizontal or vertical. There's also circle graphs or pie charts. Um, I wrote myself a question there, how are they connected? And uh, why are they called a table? And I drew myself a normal table too. Next, we have a definition. As I read this, I'd like you to highlight important information on this page. Table of values. A table of values is a way to present numbers in columns and rows so you can see patterns. Tables of values can be vertical, like Way's table, or horizontal, like Hannah's. Table of values are used to organize information to find patterns. And there you can see there's two examples. First, there's Way's cube pattern, which is a vertical table. It shows the shape number 1, 2, 3, and then the number of cubes, 2, 6, 10. And then on the right there, there's Hannah's cube pattern, which shows which is uh, horizontal and shows shape number one, two, three, and number of cubes, two, six, ten. So it's the same pattern shown in two different types of tables. If you haven't already highlighted important information, go back, reread this, and highlight that important information now. And here's what highlighted information may look like. You can see I highlighted a table of values because uh, that's the what we're defining. Uh, columns, I drew myself a little column. Rows, go left and right. Vertical horizontal, and this is what they're for. They're to organize information and to help you to find patterns. Okay, next we have an example. Leah is playing a type of solitaire. Each new row she makes increases by the same number of cards. Leah wants to continue this increasing pattern as far as she can with a deck of 52 cards. The question is, how many cards will be in the last row Leah can make? You can see here the first row has one card, and then this is the second row, this is the third row, and this is the fourth row. And so for your activity here, uh, you can have a choice. Um, either have a discussion to check for understanding, or model this problem using actual cards. Or if you'd like a challenge, you can pause here and try to solve the problem yourself. So I'm going to model it with actual cards. That first row has one card. The next row has one, two, three. The row after that has one, two, three, four, five. And the one after that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and I'm going to leave this model here so that I can check my work afterwards. Okay, so this is how Leah would solve the problem. She recorded the card pattern in two tables of values. The first table, table one, shows the row number and the number of cards in each row. So the first row had one card, second row had two, three cards, the third row has five cards, the fourth row has seven cards. The second table shows the total number of cards in all the rows. So this is kind of interesting. So the first row had one card, so that's all the cards they used, but the second row has then used four cards because they used one card and then one, two, three. And so I'm counting one, two, three, four. That's how many cards total we've used. Uh, to check in here, I want you to explain what both tables are for. What does table one show and what does table two show? I would probably have explained this to a person beside me or my parents. Hey, so the first table shows how many cards in each row. So Row one has one, row two has three, whereas that second table shows how many cards all together. So at row two, we have three cards plus one, so four cards. 
Okay, next we're gonna extend the tables. So this is the same, you can see table one is showing the number of cards in each row and table two is showing the number of rows and the total number of cards in all the rows. So go ahead and extend the tables and then see if you can answer this question. There will be blank cards in the last row that Leah can make. And here's my work. So you can see that in table one, the pattern was at added by two each time. So the number of cards each row was one, then three, then five, then seven, then nine, then 11, then 13, then 15, then 17. Row, table two was really the, the one that we needed to solve the problem. And I noticed that it started by going from one to four, which is three more, and then from four to nine, which is five more, and then from nine to 16, which is seven more. And so it started at one, added three each time, plus two more each time. So that's where I wrote in that plus three, plus five, plus seven, plus nine, plus 11, plus 13, plus 15. And I started adding those up. Now I noticed that at row seven, we were at 49 cards, which is close to 52, which is how much is there in a deck. And then at row eight, we we're up to 64 cards. So that's too many. And so according to this, there will be 13 cards in the last row that Leah can make. If you're in class or you have a deck of cards, I would highly recommend you actually dealing these out right now and see that the final row of cards that you're able to make fully is row seven with 13 cards. Okay, before we move on to the second half of the lesson, this is a good point to pause. If you're pretty confident that you're understanding what tables are, then maybe you continue with the lesson. Um, but if you don't have a lot of time left in your session, or you need to go back and review some of what a table is, or you think practicing what a table is, uh, this is a pretty natural place to start. And so you can do some more practice on IXL, there's worksheets, uh, and you can also create your own patterns. So do the same thing with the cards, but instead of adding two new cards every time, maybe add three every time or uh, make a new pattern. But if you're ready to continue the lesson, then let's continue. The second general concept we're gonna learn about is what is a graph? A graph is a way of showing information so it is more easily understood. A graph can be concrete, for example, students wearing red in one line and students not wearing red in another. It can be pictorial, for example, a picture or a symbol to show the number of items in each category, or it can be abstract, like bars on a graph showing the number of items in each category. The two main graphs that we're gonna look at this year in grade six are both abstract graphs. The one on the left is called a bar graph and the one on the right is called a line graph. So you can see the bar graph is showing the outcome of tossing coins, heads or tails. And there is a little over 25 tosses for heads and a little over 20 for tails. And so that makes sense that they're about half and half uh, when you're tossing coins. This line graph here, a line graph is a way of showing data based on connecting plotting points in a meaningful order. And so uh, you can use a line graph to show how data is changing. So in this case, if you're jogging uh, and every minute you're jogging about 300 meters, then you're gonna jog more and more meters as you keep going. Uh, for this one, what I would like you to do is uh, highlight the important information and then make some sort of connection. Discuss other types of graphs or when you've seen these graphs before, maybe make a connection to tossing coins or to jogging. Um, so go ahead and do that now. Highlight and make a connection. Okay, here's an example of what it might look like when it's highlighted. Again, I, I highlighted graph because that's what we're talking about. Uh, they are so that information can more easily be understood and they can be concrete and I put a little uh, question mark beside concrete because I think that word is probably not super well known for grade six students. All it means is real. So abstract is an idea. Concrete is in the real world. So students wearing red in one line and not red in another. That's just a real life graph. Uh, pictorials, pictures, and then abstract is uh, I mean, not in the real world. It's like a representation. So we're talking about bar graphs and line graphs. I also might have a connection to uh, this jogging thing. I actually think that 300 meters a minute is actually probably pretty fast. And I'm curious how I might test that. I don't know. Okay, so now we have how to build a graph from a table. So here are the steps to building a graph. First, you're gonna label the title, the x-axis and the y-axis based on your information. So you can see here that our title is grass height and then our y-axis is the height of the grass and the x-axis is the time since mode. And that's because that's the information we are given on the table. I think I updated this 
to label the title part already, so you might want to add that in your notes. Second, you just got decide on a scale for your graph. So when we're saying a scale, we mean how much does each axis go up each time. So in this case, our largest number is 10 centimeters of grass, and our largest time is three weeks. And so we write in that our y-axis is in centimeters and our time is in weeks. And then it makes sense here to just have every line be one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10, because that's the most we need. But sometimes you might need more. Like if we were talking about height of trees and it was up to 100, I don't know, 100 centimeters or something, uh, you might need to go up by 10 each time, something like that. So you're, it's your job to decide on the scale. Third, you plot the points based on the information. So in this case, at zero weeks, the grass was four centimeters high. So at zero, we plotted a point at four. At one week, the grass was six centimeters high. So that's one six. Two weeks, eight centimeters high. There's your two eight. And at three weeks, we're at 10 centimeters high, three ten. And so that's plotting your points on a graph. If you wanted to make this a line graph, the next step would be to connect the lines. We'll talk more about when to do that or not in a stats lesson. So go ahead and what I want you to do is color code or number the three steps. So this is step one, right? Where in here is that happening? So I decided to use color. You can see pink is labeling the x-axis and the y-axis. So there's the, that, that, and that. Yellow is deciding on the scale. That's that. And three, uh, orange is plotting the points on the graph based on your information. Okay, I also added a four that you could connect the dot if continuous, if the data should be a line graph. And in your copy of the notes, there's no title here, so I added that. So here's another opportunity for some guided practice. Uh, this question asks you to graph this data on the coordinate plane. And you can see it's Bob the beekeeper's honey production. And then there's time in weeks and honey produced. So go ahead and do that. Okay, here's an example of what that might look like. You can see that uh, we've labeled the points and I decided to connect to the dots. Next, another opportunity for you to practice. This time it includes the labeling. So we have a blank coordinate grid here and your job is to graph that data on the coordinate plane. Do that now. Okay, and here's what that might look like. You can see there's a title, vegetable soup, uh, broth needed in quarts is how I labeled the y-axis, and then batches of soup on the x-axis, and then uh, we just used 1 through 10 for the scale and plotted all the points. Okay, your key practice is this question here. Jaden made this card pattern by adding the same number of cards to each row. So your first job is to fill in the table of values to show Jaden's pattern. Row one has three cards, row two has six cards, and row three has nine cards. You can use that table to fill that in. B asks, what is the pattern rule for the cards? You fill that in, start with blank, then blank each time. And then C asks, how many cards will there be in row 10? Okay, here's the key for that one. Uh, so you can see that we go from Row 1 to 10 and number of cards, we add 3 each time. Uh, the, the rule is to start with 3 cards and then add 3 each time. And in row 10, there will be 30 cards. If you finish your key practice, there is lots of IXL practice to do. Uh, three good skills are grade 5 EE3, completing a table from a graph. Grade 5 AA4, graphing points from a table. And grade 6 II4 which is extending a shape pattern. This is what those three look like. I do not have a uh, key or, or exemplar for those today. And your uh, problem of the week is square madness revisited. And so the question is how many squares can you find in this figure? And the hint is to look for different sizes of squares. We've done this question before with a little bit of a smaller square. And uh, what I'm curious about is can you use graphs or tables to try to extend this problem, to try to find patterns, and maybe to answer how many squares can you find in any size square. So a 10 by 10 square, for example, or even a 20 by 20 square. So that's your challenge for the week. Again, I don't have a key for that because that's problem solving.
Don't forget to explore more. There's lots of good stuff in the slides if you rip through them. Uh, my top three are this problem by Nikish about traveling. Uh, these math books, I have most of them in my class uh, and they're good stuff. And then just making your own graph or your own pattern problem. Um, so like make a graph showing anything from your life. How long do you take brushing your teeth every day? How far is your commute? How many kilograms of cereal do you eat? Whatever. Um, how much money do you spend when traveling? So those are my three suggestions. And as always, there's a bunch of other stuff in here. Lots of good stuff. All right, so to review, a graph is a way of showing information so it can more easily be understood. There's a bunch of different types of graphs and the two that we're gonna use most of the time are bar graphs and line graphs. And a table of values is a way to present numbers in columns and rows so that you can see patterns. And so this is an example of a vertical table of values and this is a horizontal table of values. Enjoy using those tools this week and I need a slogan. Bye.